Hello everyone and thanks for coming to the ESE Showcase. I'm Simon O'Kane and I'm going to talk about my recent paper on modelling lithium plating in lithium ion batteries. In particular, I'll be focusing on the differential voltage minimum associated with lithium plating and use modelling to find out what its physical origin is. One way of detecting lithium plating is through the inverse process, lithium stripping. It's well known that if you discharge after a fast charge or leave the battery to rest after a fast charge, you get this high voltage plateau, as you can see on the left. That's an indicator of lithium plating. In 2014, Petzl and Dancer proposed differentiating the standard VQ curve to get a dV by dQ versus Q curve, which has a minimum, which indicates the end of the high voltage plateau, and so Petzl and Dancer believed the end of the stripping process. And if that's true, the capacity at which the minimum occurs is the capacity of lithium that was stripped, so you can quantify lithium plating. In 2018, two different modelling groups tried to test if this was true. So if you look on the right, Run et al. very helpfully drew this, these three plots above each other uh, with lines connecting the differential voltage minima to the plot of reversible lithium versus time. And they found that the lithium goes to zero at exactly the point where the minimum occurs. Uh, Young et al. on the left found something similar. However, both of these models had problems. They didn't do control studies with no plating, despite modelling giving you that luxury. And they also relied on unrealistic assumptions regarding the diffusion of lithium ions in graphite. So if you look on the left, there are three different measurements by three different methods of the diffusion coefficient of lithium ions in graphite versus the degree of lithiation. And as you can see, all of them have these spikes which correspond to the phase transitions between different stages of lithiation. On the right are the assumptions used in the simulations, which don't have these spikes at all. So in this work, we're going to use more realistic diffusion coefficients. In particular, we're going to use the yellow line and see what happens. Last year, our group published some experimental work where they did control studies. So they did a discharge before and after the fast charge to see what changed. The black lines are before the fast charge, the red lines are after. They also did two different types of thermal management. On the left is natural convection, where the cell was placed in a thermal chamber at zero degrees, and they found that during charge you had 25 degrees of self-heating, followed by a gradual decrease back to zero degrees during discharge, on the right is conductive cooling, where the cell was actively cooled to keep the surface temperature constant to within the experimental margin of error. Just like Petzl and Dancer, they differentiated the VQ curves. Uh, sorry, but the cooling methods have been swapped. The conductive cooling is now on the left, and they found two minima one very early in the discharge and one sometime later, whereas the control study only had one dV minimum. For the natural air convection case, both studies had only one minimum and they occur in roughly the same place. However, both cells showed considerable lithium plating on teardown leading Ian to conclude that absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. To briefly talk about the model, it's going to be a pseudo 2D Newman model, and how Newman models work is each point on the x-axis is simultaneously occupied by a fraction of electrolyte and solid electrode particle. 
this is called porous electrode theory, where most of the equations occur along that x-axis. One is different, the diffusion of lithium in these spherical particles. The model is not thermally coupled. Instead, we're going to use a dynamic temperature profile based on the surface temperature measurements taken by Campbell et al.'s experiments. And the model is going to be solved using COMSOL. The critical parameters are the open circuit potential uh, and lithium diffusion coefficients of the graphite negative electrode. Now, these were measured by Madeleine Ecker et al., who did their measurements on the same cell that we're using, which is very convenient. And as you can see, the open circuit potential is flat, except at the phase transitions between the different stages of lithiation. And the diffusion coefficients also spikes at those phase boundaries, as I showed you earlier. The conductive cooling experiment was simulated by just having a constant temperature throughout the simulation. And as you can see on the right, both dV minima are predicted by the model, whereas if you turn the plating off, which is the red dashed line, you get the same results as before the fast charge, which is really encouraging. So the natural air convection experiment had a dynamic temperature profile. Now, unlike the experiment, you do see both dV minima after the fast charge, but it's very instructive as to what's actually going on. What's happening is the single minimum predicted by the model with plating disabled is split into two when plating is enabled. And we're going to look into why that is. So just like Yang et al. and Lun et al. previously, I've also plotted plated lithium capacity versus discharge capacity. But unlike them, we found that the points where the dV minima occurred were nowhere near the end of stripping. And we looked more into it, and the actual cause of the minimum is the phase transition from stage two to stage three during discharge. What's happening is the plating of lithium causes a shortage of stage two in the graphite particles, so the phase transition occurs abruptly, which leads to that sharp feature that you see. Just to test if this was true, we abandoned the concentration-dependent diffusion coefficient and just used a constant like Lernetal did. And you still see the minimum, but when you do the plated lithium capacity versus discharge capacity on the right, what's happened is the physics has changed. The minimum now does mark the end of stripping. So, other conclusions. Previously, the differential voltage minimum was widely believed to mark the end of stripping, but our simulations show that the minimum is in fact a sharper, more abrupt version of a minimum that occurs anyway. So the consequence of this is it throws serious doubt on the possibility of using the differential voltage minimum to detect plating, but does not rule it out altogether. And finally, using concentration dependent diffusion coefficients is critical to simulating plating and stripping correctly. Thank you very much.